GOP nominee, Donald Trump, blasting President Obama as well as Hillary Clinton for not calling this what he says it obviously is. And we have Donald Trump joining us right now on the phone. Good morning, Mr. Trump. Good morning, Allison. Thank you for being with us on New Day. We know what a busy day this is for you. Uh, I want to start by talking about uh, one of the tweets that you sent out in the hours after this attack. You renewed your call for the total and complete ban on Muslims entering the U.S. But of course, in this case, this was uh, this was a U.S. citizen. This was someone who was born here. So what do you do about this kind of radicalization or homegrown terror? Well, that's right. We've had uh, people born here that caused tremendous difficulty. We've had uh, people coming in, and we have, by the way, thousands and thousands of people pouring into our country right now who have the same kind of hate and probably even more that he has, and we have to stop. We cannot take in more Syrian refugees. Uh, and many of them are going to be causing big problems in the future. And as you know, I've been a pretty good prognosticator as to what's going to be happening. So we have to stop that. As far as the people born here, there are many people born here that become radicalized. You saw that where the in San Bernardino, where he became radicalized yeah. possibly by her. Nobody really knows. Maybe nobody's ever going to figure that one out. But we have we need much better intelligence gathering information. We need intelligence gathering centers because the people in the communities where these people are, they know there's something off. They know there's something going wrong. In San Bernardino, there were bombs all over the apartment floor. In uh, other cases, they knew when they went and interviewed. And you're going to find that with this, this madman. Uh, the people in the area, the people in the neighborhood, they know there's something off with him, and they don't report them to the police. They don't report them to the FBI. And, you know, this is much different, Allison, yeah. than when we fight a war with Germany or with Japan and they have uniforms. These, there are no uniforms here. This is going to be pure intelligence gathering. And people, Muslims, yeah. where they are, they have to report these people. Otherwise, it's going to be a bigger, yeah. bigger problem. And we have right now thousands of people and, and in the United States living in the United States who have the same kind of hate in their heart as he had. And yeah. we have to know who they and are. Mr. Trump, you know, and that this guy was on the FBI's radar. In fact, he was interviewed twice by FBI agents in 2013 and 2014. They were concerned that he did have radical ties to extremists or to terrorists. And yet they concluded that there was nothing they could do about it. And he was allowed to own a gun. He had a carry license. Are you comfortable with people who the FBI has identified as possibly having radical ties owning weapons? Well, in this case, he was actually licensed, and which is sort of an amazing thing. He went out, he got licensed, he was fully licensed, so he had the right to have a gun. So for all of those people that want to have people go out and get licensed, here's an example of somebody that went out, you know, went out and got licensed, and he was able to get a gun. Uh, gun owners, even more than ever, right. need to be able to protect themselves. And by the way, if you had some guns in that club, uh, the night that this took place, if you had guns on the other side, you wouldn't have had the tragedy that you had. If people in that room but there had was, guns I mean, but with Mr. the bullets Trump, there flying was an in the opposite there direction was an right, at him, guard. right at his head, you wouldn't have had the same tragedy that you ended up having. And nobody even knows how bad that tragedy is, because I think probably the numbers will get bigger and bigger and worse and worse. I hear the, the injured are so gravely injured. But if you had guns in that room, if you had... Even if you had a number of people having them strapped to their ankle or strapped to their waist, where bullets could have flown in the other direction right at them, you wouldn't have had the same kind of a tragedy. Mr. Trump, this is Christine Romans in the New York studio. We've lost our uh, satellite feed with Allison Camerata, so I'm going to pick up from here, sir, if you don't mind. So what okay. do you think? Is there, Mr. Trump, any policy prescription in light of this event that would prevent a future attack like this? What would be your policy prescription? Well, you, you have tremendous numbers of people with this tremendous radical hate. The first thing you need is you need a president that's going to mention the problem. And he won't even mention what the problem is. And unless you're going to mention, unless you're going to say it's radical Islamic terrorism and, and hate, unless you're going to say that, Christine, it's going to be, you're never going to solve it. 
and you have Hillary Clinton refuses to use the words. Now, she doesn't really believe that she shouldn't use it. She's afraid to use it because Trump, on our show this President morning, she Obama did, doesn't want her to use it. Uh, and, on, she did you know, say that this morning. He's, she said, he's the boss, Mr. okay? And, and, and she's afraid of him because obviously, you know, she probably thinks that he has a very profound effect over her life. Let me jump he's in. I don't know if you can hear me on the phone. Let me jump so in because... she's not going to use it. But I bet you that she would believe that she would love to use those words because almost everybody agrees that those words should be used. She said, Mr. Trump, on our interview with her just an hour ago, that she's happy to use the words radical Islam, uh, that she's happy to use the words that, that the semantics aren't an issue here. It's, you know, this is now about, right, investigating what happened, finding the motive, uh, finding out more about this man, this murderer, and figuring out if there's anything we can do to prevent something like this. The greatest source, and the, well, look, first of all, we have to stop people from coming in from Syria. We're taking them in by the thousands, and you're going to have tremendous problems. You will have problems right now. You will have problems like we've never seen before. And this will only get worse because we have very weak leadership, and Hillary is going to be weaker than Obama. Uh, we have, if she got in, she would be weaker than Obama, in my opinion. All you have to do is read the Secret Service reports about her, the book that just came out. And when you read you know, that, you can't a, have her as this president. This isn't a refugee so, issue, though. I mean, this particular case is not a refugee issue. You know, this is a case, <clears throat> excuse me, this is a case of an American citizen um, with what appears to be multiple different motivations here, but investigators yeah. will finally determine, uh, determine what happened here. But how, how do you equate what happened here with, what's, with, with a Syrian refugee? Okay. Uh, this is a case of uh, surveillance. This is a case of intelligence gathering information. You will find that many people that knew him felt that he was a whack job. He was going something like this would have happened. I already hear it starting to happen of uh, people that knew him, the ex-wife and other people. Uh, they don't report them. For some reason, the Muslim community does not report people like this. So we do have two different standards. We have people that live here and have become radicalized and have been radicalized. You look at his father. His father is a, sort of a prime example. But you look at the people that have come to the country and you look at and, and are here. And for that, we need intelligence gathering. We have to look at the mosques. We have to look at all, we have to look at the community. And believe me, the community knows the people that have potential for blow up. The communities so, that we're talking about, they know about this guy. They knew that this was tremendous potential for blow up. And then, of course, we have to stop allowing people into our country, build a safe zone in Syria, uh, get the Gulf states to pay for it. We can lead it. We don't want to pay for it. We don't have any money. Our country doesn't have any money. We owe $19 trillion. So but the Gulf states have nothing but money. Let them pay for it. We'll lead it. Build a safe zone in Syria so they can stay there. But, but the last thing right. we need is to take in more people like this guy because you're going to have problems. This is just the beginning. You're going to have problems like this all over our country, and it's going to get worse and worse. And look what's happening in Europe. It's a mess. Donald but Trump. we should not be taking in more people. We have nothing. We have enough problems in our country without doing that. And we look forward to hear what you have to say later on today. Uh, apologize again, uh, Mr. Trump, for the uh, disruption in our satellite feed. Uh, but thank